Hello, still working with Python with MetaTrader 5 here. But today I'm moving away from the MA cross strategy and I'm implementing an RSI based strategy. But before I do that, I just have a few modifications to make to the foundation structure. And once I've made those changes, I think it will be in a fifth state and I will just upload that structure to uh, GitHub so you can download that. But I make no promises that in the future I will maintain forward or backward compatibility in this. But the aim here is that once I've made today's changes, it will be easy to just drop in a new strategy into the structure here. So step one, because this is no longer an MA cross, it's more of a general purpose, this main file name needs to change. So I'm just calling it trading bot. Now, one thing I want to do is to move this config file, config JSON. I'm going to move that into a configuration folder and on the command line then where you run the trading bot, I'm going to let you nominate the configuration file. And that way you simply change the configuration file if you want to run the MA cross or the RSI or some other strategy. And I'll come back to this later to make some changes for the RSI strategy, but at least that's in the right place now. Back in the uh, trading bot file, I need to load that strategy. I'm just making a small change to this. I'm going to remove where I've been assigning values to these constants. I'm just going to be using the config throughout. Uh, but I'm going to load everything from that config file. So I'll just remove this. And in fact, I'll remove all of these lines now. And now I've added these lines to load the config. You'll note I'm calling here util.load config from args. So that's different to the earlier load config. And I'm going to create that function inside util because this will also allow you to specify command line arguments. So first in the util file, I'm importing arg parse, so that will allow me to parse the arguments on the command line. Now the beginnings of the load config from args function. Uh, I initialize the parser. I add an argument, this nargs equals question mark. This is because the first argument on the command line is always going to be the name of the config. So this config.json, for example, it's always going to be that. The remaining arguments are going to be named. So there'll be testing, MT path and cycle. So I grab the arguments then from the parser with parse args and then my config path, I'm going to default that. So if it is not supplied on the command line, then I'm just going to default that to the configuration slash config.json. So that will be my default go to and it makes it easy for me to run this inside the IDE. And then I have the familiar load underscore config. So that's the earlier function here, which just reads in the data from that config file. And if nothing comes back, then you've got an invalid configuration file. I just lock the message and quit to exit at that point. And then in case you've specified arguments in the config file and also on the command line, the command line will override the config file. So for testing MT path and cycle, if they exist in the args, then I'm simply setting the value in the config file and then just return the config. And now as part of making this general purpose, I'm going to allow you to specify the name of the strategy inside the config file. Uh, in fact, let me modify the config file just to show how that's going to work. So I'll be including a section inside the config file called strategy that will have a file. Now this is the file that contains the strategy and that will be inside a strategy folder. And then the name of the class inside that file. And while I'm here, I think I will also add Instead of hard coding the history count to 10,000 bars, I'll let you set that inside the config file. So then in trading bot, I can no longer simply put this name of a class here. This is the strategy file. As I said, it's inside a strategy folder. Let me just create the folder to begin with. So that RSI file will be inside this folder and it comes from the config, config.strategy.file. The name comes from the config. And then I have to use the import lib to get that uh, class from the file. Now I can see I haven't got import lib here, so I'll just add that in. And now I can use this strategy class here. On the MT5 initialize the change here, that MT path, I've, I'm just leaving everything inside config now. So config.mt path. Change that to config.testing. Now this params, also back here in config, I've got symbol inside the parameters and these are the parameters that go directly to the strategy. So I'm going to be testing EURUSD on a one minute time frame with a magic number of one, two, three, four, although 
at this stage I'm not really using the magic number. And since I've added the history count, I'll use that instead of the hard-coded 1000 bars. Uh, I think I'll remove this print history now, we know that's working. It's not really all testing anymore, so I'm just going to change this variable. I'm going to call that the runner. And in a minute, I'm going to change the custom backtest so that instead of having these arguments for testing and cycle, it can be a little bit more flexible if I just pass the entire config in there. And I'll do the same for the arguments to the run function. And I'll pass in params, which are the parameters for the uh, for the strategy itself. And because I'm now passing in this config.params, I do want to pass the testing flag into here. That's why I've added these lines. I had this from the earlier version. I'm converting the time frame, which is a string inside the config, to an MT5 time frame value. So you've seen the function for that in the last video. But I'm also assigning the testing inside params to be equal to the overall testing. That's just a copy. So config.testing, then we print the result. I'm going to remove these counts. They were just there for demonstration earlier. MT5 shutdown and return. That should be all of the changes in here. And this trading bot will be part of the GitHub package. Ah, one more thing, I no longer need this import of MA cross. That's being handled down here with the import lib. So here in custom backtesting, I can remove this testing and cycle arguments and replace those just with the config argument. And because it's possible for config to be none, I'm just going to replace these two lines. I'm going to set default values for the cycle and testing, and then if there is a config, and if it contains cycle and testing, I'll assign those values as replacements. I don't have any changes in this run function, so I can leave that. Because I'm now passing in a single config object, I don't have this symbol time frame magic. I don't need to set all of those. I do still need to create a .config variable for the class though. Now, for the strategy I'm about to write, I need to calculate a take profit and stop loss and a current price, uh, but I'm using an RSI indicator, which actually doesn't give me a price, it gives me a, an RSI value. So I need some extra functions here. These are just general utility functions. I want to get the ask price and the bid price, they're fairly simple functions. If I'm in testing, I don't have a bid and an ask, all I've got is the close price, so I'll just return that from testing mode. And if not, then I can get the tick info from MT5, and I can return the ask or the bid. And then a get entry price, I wanna know the price where I'm entering the trade. If I'm buying, then I can get that from the self.ask, and if I'm selling, I can get that from self.bid. And this will return a stop loss and a take profit, as well as the entry price. So the stop loss is the price minus the stop loss distance multiplied by this multiplier. And you can see I've got multiplier equals one if it's a buy and minus one if it's a sell. And that's if the distance is greater than zero, else zero. So if you supply an SL distance of zero, then you'll get a stop loss price of zero. And the same for the take profit, distance zero, you'll get a price zero. And the only difference between these two statements is price minus for the stop loss or price plus. And then I just return all three of those values, the price, the stop loss, and the take profit. Now I can move straight on to the RSI strategy. And I've created earlier this strategy folder. So I'm going to now create a file. And what I'll be doing is any RSI related strategies will go inside this one RSI.py file. So first thing is the uh, modules.custom metatrader is MT5. And that's mainly so that I can get things like the uh, order types. But then I've also got this modules.indicators import RSI. If I go back to what we had before, the MA cross strategy, you'll see down at the bottom I had this SMA function. Uh, I'm going to move that and a new RSI function into this modules.indicators. So I've created the indicators.py file inside modules. I'm importing pandas and importing pandas TA as TA. And here's my SMA function, which returns the TA SMA. And the reason I have this as a separate function instead of just TA SMA is that I need to convert to a NumPy. And the same with the RSI. 
and now the rsi.py follows a familiar structure the same as the uh, moving average cross begin with the class name the rsi trend which go back to com rsi trend is the class name file is just rsi imports from custom strategy so i need classes.custom backtesting import custom strategy in the init i still need to set the depth inside the strategy because that's the place where i know how many bars of data i need to be able to calculate the indicator and in this case i'm just saying the period which is my rsi period plus three i might as well go and put all the parameters into the config file now so replacing the params here so some familiar values the symbol time frame magic number and the volume for each trade this period is the period for the rsi and my particular strategy says that i will trade when the rsi has gone above the high trigger and after that it falls below the high entry and after that i will sell if the rsi goes below the low trigger and then comes back above the low entry i will buy and then my stop loss and take profit so stop loss will be 0 0.001 behind the price and take profit 0 0.001 ahead of the price so to track that uh, rsi moving beyond the triggers i have two variables here high trigger set and low trigger set and they're both false to begin with and then i one time call this self.recalculate indicators uh, if i'm in testing mode i'll need to do that just so that i get all the data ready for testing and then the next function literally called next i'm grabbing the value which is the rsi value from bar minus one if that is above the high trigger then i set the high trigger set to true and obviously i turn the low trigger set to false the opposite if the value has gone below the low trigger then the low trigger set is true and the high trigger set is false now if the rsi isn't above the high or below the low trigger then I check if the high trigger is already set and the value now is less than the high entry, then I'm calling that get entry price function, getting back the price, the stop loss, and the take profit for an order type cell. Stop loss distance comes from the config, and the take profit distance also comes from the config. And then I just call self.cell, which is an existing function that we had last time. And then the size is the volume in the config and the stop loss and take profit are the values that were just returned. Once I've done that, I'll just set both of the triggers to false. To round it out, I have the opposite. If the low trigger is set and the value has now gone above the low entry, I do the same thing, get the entry price, but here it's an order type buy. And then I call self.buy. And the only thing left in the strategy is this. Uh, so recalculate indicators is inside custom backtesting which simply says if we're testing and not calculate a return and if not testing then we get data and then it calls calculate indicators so i need to create the calculate indicators function and at this stage the understanding of how to calculate the indicators is inside the strategy uh, i am looking at moving that out and making it more generic but for the time being, that just seemed to be more trouble than it was worth. So it's easy enough to just have one function inside here where I calculate indicators. Uh, first of all, I clear the indicators that we have, and then self.rsi, self.i, the rsi, which is the function name that we had, the data set that I'm feeding into that, and the period for the rsi calculation. Now, I think that's everything. Let me just do a quick eyeball check. And I think that's ready to go. Now, I'll run it through test, but this is the sort of strategy that could take a while if I run it in live. I'm just going to trust that it works. If I find a problem with it, then I will post notes about that on the web page. If you go to the web page, you will also be able to directly download this rsi.py file, and there will be a link on the web page to the GitHub repository where you can download the trading bot, everything else other than the uh, 
other than basically the rsi.py because that's the strategy for this particular tutorial and as i said i make no promises about maintaining forward or backward compatibility in the platform files but i will keep them up to date on uh, github as i make changes so i'm about to run the test but i've also noticed that i've still got this self.testing and symbol and time frame and depth here in the custom backtesting file and they've obviously been replaced now with self.config.testing and so on. So I'll just modify all of those. And now I can run the test. I have modified config to put this into testing mode. As I said, it could take too long if I want to wait for a live trade. I might run that later and just make sure that the code that I upload to the website is correct. But for now, I'm just going to run the test. All right, so that at least runs in testing mode. Uh, what did I get? Doesn't look like it was the most successful strategy but I haven't attempted to tune any of the parameters for this 47% win rate. If I can improve that, then it shouldn't be too bad. So that's it for today. Um, check the description of the video for the location of the web page where you can download this rsi.py file. And there'll also be a link to GitHub where you can download all the rest of the files for this. If this has been useful or even mildly interesting, then please click the like button. And if you want to see more of these videos, click subscribe and then click the bell icon. Thank you for watching.